Hello and welcome to the tutorial about animation exporting and anim export in Maya. So let's say that you've just got a new character rigged up and you want to check the weighting of your character because you think it looks pretty good. One of the things that Maya allows you to do is export an animation file and it has no other information than the animation that runs throughout the hierarchy of your character. So if we were to open up the controls for this character all of these have little keyframes on them, and it will not export any of this geometry, but it will export the hierarchy of animation with it. So similar to the way that you can see that the construction here in the hierarchy of the control sets are in a particular order, you need to make sure that you understand that Maya is not exporting animation as one lump sum total but it is actually adhering to the same hierarchical structure. So you can export animation as, and you can import it as long as the structure is verbatim. It is exactly the same as the one you exported it from. So if I were to export from this node, it has an entirely different structure than if I were to export from this node. And the reason is because this is how Maya thinks. If your hierarchy is your arm, leg, head, toes, finger controller, your animation will have that same hierarchy when you export it. And if you import it into something where the top node is missing, then this animation propagates to totally uh, different uh, constraints. And if you've added something on uh, after you've exported the animations, then you need to make sure that it's at the very end of the existing hierarchy so it is not disruptive to the existing hierarchy that you've exported animations from. So things have to track. You understand the hierarchy is thus. Maya needs the animation to be exported in exactly the same structure. So with that in mind, we can come in and uh, with this character, right now he's animated. And he's animated using a particular type of animation that I like to use called the yoga animation. And that is that when you're done rigging a character, um, I've done an animation that uh, pretty much confines it to one joint at a time, one or two joints at a time, so that when you scrub through the animation, you can see it testing just those joints. So for instance, the first couple of frames over this 420 frame period are gonna be the IK hand controllers coming in and out, and then I test the shoulders, things like that. And so pretty much every part of the body has a go at just doing one thing at a time. So you can come over here and sort of gauge whether or not the weighting is good for the character. And it's a good way to sort of check your, your character because if you're going to continue doing a bipedal rig, or if you're going to continue using Sky Rigger with the same scaled character. So for instance, if you had a, a much smaller character uh, rigged and you want to cut and paste the animation, remember that this animation is translation, so it's going to come right there in space. The rest of this stuff, like rotation, is inconsequential to the character's scale because a rotate of 90 degrees is going to be the same no matter what size it is. So when you're dealing with the FK rig, you're fine. It's when you deal with the IK rig, you're dealing with specifics. So the hands right here going back and forth. So this is what I call a yoga animation. It's what I like to keep on file just as an animation file because after I'm done rigging up a character, I can quickly put it onto this rig, making sure that everything is uh, prepared for a six foot high rigged character, for instance. And then I can sit back and sort of check the um, weighting of the character by virtue of using this yoga animation. So to come in and make sure that you have it um, installed, you have to come up here to Windows and go over to Settings Preferences and go pop down to your Plugin Manager. And so when you have that up and running, come over to Anim Import Export and make sure it's not only loaded, but make sure it's auto loaded. If these are checked off, you're not gonna be able to export something as an animation file. So come in here and click on Loaded, which means it will be loaded for the current session of Maya, but also auto load if you're gonna be continuing to use this because it automatically loads it next time you bring it up in Maya. So with this selected, what you can do is come up to the very top. Again, I'm being very careful to grab the very top and I have some animation. This cannot be blank. If you want the animation of your character to be exported, 
be sure that you've got at least one keyframe throughout because that helps Maya understand that everything has a value. So even if it's not moving right now, on some of these they're only single keyframes, uh, it does establish a um, sort of a pin in each of these different constraints that has a value. If it doesn't, you might be asking Maya to think about things that it's not very good at. So make sure you have at least one keyframe per constraint for your character and grab the topmost parent of that hierarchy and then go over to Maya and right here I'm going to Maya and export selection go into the selections for that you should have the selection now for anim export at the very bottom so with it selected you want to make sure that you've got these options anim export default extensions you want to have all of these options set so that you are going to get all the animation that goes throughout the hierarchy. If you do not make sure that below is checked, you're only going to actually be exporting the topmost nodes hierarchy or uh, topmost nodes animation. So make sure you've clicked on below and everything else should be time range. You want the entire time range and you should be able to go from there. Just export the selection. It should take you to wherever you've saved or you want to save your animation. And I've already previously saved this, but it will be a .anim file. And this is my first variation of yoga. This is the complete yoga, which I've already saved. So I'm not going to save, but you should be able to do this with, um, with relative ease. At this point, you want to go in and verify that Maya has saved what you need. And you can do that by going to the folder and taking a look at whether or not you have your uh, animation saved. And I'm looking at mine right here. So we've got yoga1.anim, yogacomplete.anim. All right, wonderful. So when I want to delete an animation now, sort of test that I can bring it in and it'll be fine, I come up here and sometimes I've gone in and I have clicked on delete all by type. Um, animations things like that I really don't like to use this it's, it's very destructive and sometimes you can delete things that you don't intend to especially with a complex rig and you can blame Maya but you're still the one left holding the pieces so what I've learned to do instead is to come up and grab the topmost uh, you can come over to keys and I don't actually use delete I use cut cut seems to do a very nice job trimming around all the animated curves and leaving all the curves that are necessary for the rig to work. So I like to prefer, I prefer to use cut and I just make it you know grab everything hierarchy again below time range all those are those are pretty substantial. Uh, it looks like it has cut all the animations and if I scrub through the timeline I can validate this because the character doesn't do anything. So here I'm scrubbing through the timeline and this character stays absolutely still. I could verify it further by going all the way up to the top of the hierarchy, clicking on Windows, going to Animation Editors, uh, Graph Editor, and seeing that there's nothing. The dude control, this dude has no control. If I press Shift and I click on the plus, sutton, plus sign inside the square, you can see that even though it opens up to everything, um, the only curves I have are these sort of suspicious looking ones which are part of the rig. And those are fine to leave alone. You know, if you get things like rotate X and that's because the heel is attached to different rotations, um, then you're good. So those are only things that you need to have attached and uh, don't mess with that. So this character has no more animation. And now we can read it back on. So you want to go again to the very top of the hierarchy and come over to import this time. Go to the options and you want to import. You should have anim import at the bottom of your selectables here. Anim import and you want to make sure that you've got the entire clipboard selected. And you want to preserve, replace the entire curve. Just whatever is there, destroy it, bring in everything. Don't be cute and try to attach it or manipulate it or whatever. So click on import. You're going to go to the folder where you saved it. And then click on yoga complete anim. 
import, and boom, the character is now moving, and I'm scrubbing along the timeline here. So now we can go in and see things that, although they look, it looks like the character is pretty complete. If we just go through, we say, well, now wait a minute, take a look there. The leg needs a little better weighting. We come in really close. It helps us identify places and things we might have missed for whatever reason so that we know that that needs a little more love because look when the when the heel turns sure when it uh, goes up it's when the heel actually goes up on its toe and then turns that things are kind of kind of wonky same thing over here with this leg it looks okay when it goes forward briefly oh no it doesn't but it does identify things that you need to go over for waiting and you don't um, you can then continue up to the, the character's torso. Well, that looks that looks okay with the torso, except, oh, right there, these kind of wings sticking out when the character assumes the T-pose. See that? So this needs a little love there, too. And you can say, oh, yeah, the waiting needs to happen with the face. There's too much still. There's, there's too many things that are sort of still half bending with the neck. And it does a good job of just identifying where you need to make sure the character um, is weighted and you can do a pass on this character you can then improve the weighting while this animation is playing and then delete the animation off the character or rather cut the keys off and now you've got a better weighted character and if you bring in a more complex mesh later or if you have a similar bipedal character that you use this uh, rigging script to build you can cut and paste that animation onto it and if you so desire as I did this morning you can go into the craft editor, grab only the things that are translated, and double them in their value so that they go out longer if the character has longer arms, or they come in tighter if the character has tighter arms. Um, anyway, so that's how you can cut and paste animations amongst your rigs. You certainly can do this as well with animations for your character that you've saved previously, and it's a great way to share just the animation file since it's uh, pennies on the dollar, look how small that is, um, as opposed to, say, the mesh. It's really a significant uh, difference if it's just the animation anima uh, information. So you can do this with any amount of rigs that are the same as far as their hierarchy, and uh, it should help your workflow significantly. All right. Happy animating.